Does your 3D printed panels look like this with this ugly looking handwritten text? Or maybe you have gone a step further and added some backlighting, but you still can't quite see it and it becomes a problem during day operations because you can't see it without the backlighting. Well, we have got a solution for you with this kind of cool technique that we have come up with, which includes 3D printing with three different filaments, layering them so that it is backlightable, but you can also see it very easily during the day. So follow up this video to see how we do this and how you can do this at home with pretty basic 3D printing techniques and tools. So here's our old panel design. And you can see the text is kind of below the panel surface. And this allows it to be backlit and it's very simple to make. But this causes it to be not very visible at an angle or if the backlighting is off. And it becomes especially a problem during day operations where you don't want the backlighting on. Or if you're looking at it from the seat uh, quite on the side and not straight at the top. And if you just take a look at how this panel is made, is we have the transparent layer at the bottom, which is majority of the thickness. And then we have this sort of thinner top layer, which has the engraving on, and this has no uh, transparent filament. It's just the gray with uh, the holes for the uh, layers. And this causes uh, the problem that we are uh, facing. So you don't want to do that. Instead, what we're going to do is go ahead and have it the whole thing gray all the way through and then we have the transparent lettering going through the whole layer all the way to the top and then at the very top the final layer will be a combination of white filament and gray filament so that the letter is highly visible during without, uh, daylight operations and without the backlighting and with this method you are going to be utilizing the three filaments as efficiently as possible. So I'm just here in Fusion 360 and we have these old style panels here and we are going to be modifying them. But if you don't have any previous panels, you would just uh, make the text without the extra hassle that I show you in this beginning. But this is how I'm going to be doing this, modifying our old panels because it's easier for me. But first thing I'm going to take a look at is how thick is this panel and we can see that it's five millimeters thick now i don't want five millimeters thick panel so we're gonna just push it two millimeters in and now it's gonna be three millimeters which is uh i found that to be better since the more thickness the panel has uh the harder the light is to pass through the transparent and white top layer um, and the um, darker the backlighting will be so but we also don't want to make it too thin because it's gonna look stupid so I found three millimeters to be pretty cute. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and uh, painstakingly click every single um, letter here. Then we go ahead and extrude uh, this, and we're gonna be extruding it first on top, and then I would like to do is extrude it um, five millimeters above the surface like this. Now that we have this um, set up here, and it's like this, what I do is I go and create a new component, a new object, and I go ahead and make it like whatever size, I make it one millimeter thick, and we go ahead and make it an object, like, sorry, make it in components. It's gonna call it slice or whatever, it's gonna be our cutting tool. Then we're gonna go and click here, align, we're gonna align this bottom with this surface like so. And then what we're gonna do is move, move it like uh, on top here, like so. Or actually, let me not do that. Move it like so, so it's not quite touching the text yet. And then what we'll do is move it one millimeter up. And this is why we made it, make this total five millimeters then we rise raise this one millimeter and then also this uh, panel is one millimeter thick so now what we do is gonna click this uh, capture position and we're gonna go ahead and extrude this 
through the text and we'll select on the side here cut and this is gonna cut all of the text like this now then we can basically hide this and now we have the text separated like that and then we also have this remaining part here and I'm gonna explain why we need this remaining part here after I make this a separate body because now it's on the way so we're gonna find this here it's got the front cover bodies and you can see all of these bodies right here so what we do is we create a new component we can call that um, map light letters or whatever it doesn't matter what you call them and then we go ahead and select all the letters so it's probably all of these yep we drag them into the map light letter uh, component and now you can see they are they are an individual component we can hide them and now we can see these now the, the reason that we left these a little bit on top like this is so that we can go ahead and <laughs> extrude them through. So now again, select all the letters. So I'm gonna do this quickly. So there we go, we have all of these selected. We're gonna click extrude and extrude them through the object. And there we go, four millimeters down. And now we have all of this through. I created all of these bodies, but you don't need to worry about it. You can just close that, close this. Now you basically have this component, and then we can sh uh, show this. And the last thing you need to do is select um, select this. We're gonna go ahead and click move, and we're gonna kind of click point to point, and we're gonna select that, and then we're gonna select this, and it's gonna align. Uh, everything good like this so there we basically have it um, now we can see we have the text and we have the panel separated from each other and this text comes flush on here and it's flush on the bottom and now we have to just um, export this and that would be just simply by clicking here save as mesh and then you get this prompt here and then you just uh, uh, export it as an STL. All right, so first we're gonna go ahead and open the Bamboo Lab slicer um, and then we are gonna import both of our elements, the back uh, gray panel and the text. And now you wanna align these texts as best as you can um, and it might be a little bit difficult because they usually don't um, import to the correct positions, so you just want to move them there. And then what you also want to do is going to select the lettering, and you can go into the objects on the slicer, and you can see all the objects. And you want to go select the letters, and double click it, and select your transparent filament. And for this, you do need the Bamboo Lab AMS or other multi-material system, and you want to have selected uh, at least. For this design, three different filaments, you need the gray base, then you need the transparent for the text, and the top layer will be white. In my case, it's gonna be the orange color, but it's just the color representation, but the spool is actually white. So you do need the IMS, which is a drawback. You can't really do this manually because it's gonna take for ages. Each filament swap would be really difficult to do. Uh, there manually but when you get them aligned you need to then go ahead and set the top layer to white and by selecting the paint tool on the envelope slicer on the top bar you can go ahead and see height range and you want to select your layer height as the height range and selection view can be zero then you can go ahead and see you sell by hovering your mouse over the topmost layer you can see it highlights the area and then you can click and it paints the um, top layer in the color that you select and of course you select the white filament in our case the orange and now you can see we slice it and you can see it's the gray surroundings orange on top 
and when I move layer view you can see that it's transparent underneath and I have also flushed infill selected so that saves a bit of filament and um, flushing time so you can see the infill is um, the transparent partly and this is basically how you do it and if you're doing new panels like if you created them 100% from scratch made for this it's probably easier to align them since what I did was modify an old panel to import put them a little bit weirdly so it's a little bit messed up but it, it is you don't need to align them 100% perfect and they're definitely going to be fine if you don't get them exactly but just try to get them approximately there and the slasher will go ahead and uh, do the rest for you and now I just line it up and put the other one next to it but that one will skip and we'll look at you when we have them printed so let's go ahead and check out what the final result looks like alright now it's been the, uh, about four and a half hours or whatever the print was and you can see I got both of them here and they just nicely come off the bed because I let them let the bed cool down and you can see the yeah, um put it on here it's super good you can see it from very low angle you can still read it which is the exact point of this improvement the back side looks like this you can see the transparent part right there and uh Against uh, a window, we may be able to see the backlighting work. Not, not too well. You need a better lighting and darker environment to see the backlighting. But that's the exact point of the backlighting anyways. Um, but I have tested it uh, with the other panels that I have. I have the uh, flap panel here and I have the... Uh, I have the DS float and background lighting panels here. I have tested. They look pretty good, nice. And I'll definitely give you an update uh, when we have all the backlighting wired up. But for now, you can see it looks fantastic. And it is actually pretty simple. Now I know the negative side of this is that you need to have a printer that can change filaments mid print or I guess you could manually switch between each layer between the transparent and the gray and on the top between the uh, gray and the white but that's gonna be really tedious to sit like four hours straight looking at your prints so you really do want to have an uh, automatic filament change um, system such as the AMS and the Bumble App printers. But it's still uh, really good looking. Um, even if you do it manually by just having gray all the way through and then the last layer have white text. And that's gonna be way more feasible for people who don't have the filament change because you only need to change the filament once on the last layer. And that's actually what I have done. Uh, before but with the AMS Bumble app uh, printer and interface software it's really simple really fun uh, to see how good quality we can get with quite little effort so I hope you guys liked today's little bit different of a tutorial video and uh, tell me in the comments if you would like to see more and if you would like to know Oh, I'm gonna tell what kind of uh, tutorials you would want me to do more. But definitely, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe, like this video, and share it to anyone who you think you would might like this. But anyway, that's it for this episode, and we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.